Hello everybody, my name is Eric, and today we're going to be looking at something I think is pretty cool. You know, oftentimes, I am very critical of most uh, Microsoft products. I think there's a lot of things that Microsoft does really poorly, and I will call them out on that. But I, I think sometimes, rarely, they do something really well, and this is a case of that, which is Windows 11's implementation of the new Windows Sandbox. And what is cool here is that they have implemented graphics virtualization and partitioning, which I showed in the video, but it was a real pain to get that working, and they have done it just fully automatically. Now, there are some limitations. Seemingly, I don't think there's any way of increasing the amount of RAM or storage allocated to the VM, but it does give all of my CPU cores, so I actually might run Cinebench on this just to see how this compares to native. But unfortunately, only 4 out of 128 gigabytes of RAM and a virtual hard drive that I assume is a file on the C drive. But let me just run Unigen Heaven to show why this is so impressive. Now, for whatever reason, it can't set full screen, but it does it does work anyways. It just runs in a window. And it gets a really good score. Uh, no, we don't want the sound. That's 300 FPS. Now, if we set the camera to free, uh, it's also, unlike when I tried this over RDP, although it still appears to be using a form of RDP, looking at that, it is smooth. Like, you could play this. I don't, I don't know if you'd want to play in the Hyper-V viewer, but, like, you could... This is definitely playable. It runs nice for a benchmark, and it's running at almost 400 FPS which on a 2080 Ti is not an outstanding school, but it's a pretty good one, and it's probably actually hitting a CPU bottleneck. So what I'm going to try next is uh, Cinebench. We'll just do R15, because that's easy to get set up. But this is insanely useful, because all you have to do is go into Windows Features, which I, I think I can probably show you on this VM. I can. Oh, I guess not. I guess you can't change that in Windows Sandbox. But all you have to do is enable in Windows Features, Hyper-V and the Sandbox, and you get this out of the box, a VM that is very well isolated and uh, has full support for graphics pass-through. You can see some of the hardware... I, d I don't know, this to me implies they've got some special... I imagine they've also tweaked the OS on the client, and it would be cool to see if they could make this available with a quick install for a general Hyper-V VM. Because I know here there's uh, System32, I think it's host drive stool, and here we get file repository. Oh wow, that's a lot of, that's not actually, is that every driver installed on my host system? That's pretty interesting. But of course there will be the NVIDIA host drive store, which is what makes this graphics work, but wow, that's a lot of drivers, so that's cool. So, I wonder if we could reverse engineer this for custom VMs as well, but that's that's pretty interesting. Okay, it's definitely all the drivers, because that's my audio interface, which is definitely not passed through, so that's interesting. Then we can open Cinebench, extract it. Give that a second, and we can see how good the CPU performance is. I imagine it'll be pretty good because it's basically, it's like almost native. And this is cool because I wanted to test a GTA 5 more menus, and I was going to do it the usual way under the Linux, but the Arch Linux just pushed an update to the OVMF driver that is a temporarily broken GPU pass-through, so until that's fixed, this is a good alternative. So let's just run this benchmark. It might... Looks like it did a little bit, but eh, that's that's a pretty good score. It, given it doesn't have 100% priority, that's a good score. So there we go. Now I'm interested to see does it have accurate benchmark data? No, it just shows 2.6 gigahertz. It doesn't show the CPU frequency, which is currently set to 4 gigahertz. That's cool. So, networking. Okay, network discovery is turned off, and it wouldn't be a good idea 
to allow this to access the host PC, that would kind of defeat the whole point of it. So I'm going to go over to Malware Watch and try something, try something interesting. Let's just, let's just see. And here we can verify that this is actually a good way of testing malware. Uh, Wanna Cryptor, Winlocker. I'm gonna go for this one. It's, it looks old, but it sounds kind of cool. So that's the one we're gonna use. All right. So it's for now. Is that a fake? That looks like a fake pop-up. Okay, now the file's gone. Is that... Okay, that's a bit iffy. I don't know if that was... I don't know if that was the malware failing. I can't think of why it would say that we need to search in the store. R5A. Well, that's... That's not so good. I don't think we have anything on here of interest. So, did they remove the old uh, sample files? They used to... Okay. It's doing something. That's interesting. So it's definitely doing something, but we don't know quite what yet. Ooh! Okay. Oh! Where was that? Files underscore back. Okay, the screen. Okay! And now it crashed the sandbox, so good work. They got rid of the files, but not in the way they intended. Now I can reopen it, and the other cool thing is that this is just like a snapshot on a VM where when it reopens, there is no remainders of what we had just done. So, we wanted to then run malware, we have no risk of it lingering. And we can see, okay, so it automatically gives you Enterprise, which is not the version installed on the host system. It gives all CPU calls. Oh, that's interesting, that's like the UUID. Product ID, oh, of course 64-bit. Product key and activation. It's like, it's saying not activated, but it also doesn't really seem to care. That's interesting, so it's like some sort of generic key. Okay, so we still can't change most settings though because of that, even though the host is activated. That's interesting. Here we could change brightness, color. Can't do personalization. Actually, we can sort of... Oh, that's it. Okay, no, I was thinking maybe for a second it didn't quite work and it actually wasn't grayed out, which would be interesting. Accessibility. We can... This looks completely non-functional, which would make sense because it just runs off of the host. It doesn't need... Sources. That's interesting. Perf logs. There's even an EFI folder. That's interesting. Let's look at the partition layout. Oh! Okay, that's odd. Let me try that again. No? Okay. Well, let's try CMD. Failed to initialize. That's interesting. So this is definitely quite a modified version of Windows then. Doesn't recognize the virtual disk service. That still works, of course. I love that command because it shows like all your all your different stuff. <laughs> it's like it just goes. So the tech support cameras will try and use this as like a fake scan. Yeah, I just tried doing it, so let's see. We'll leave that. 
actually going, it's going really fast, which is good. Yeah, network still doesn't do anything. <laughs> yeah, it just works like it, like it always would. Okay, let's do CMD. This one we can run as administrator. Oh, and there's no UAC. Okay, you can't do SFC scan now. Ah, uh, what's another? Can we do, I don't think Realm exists on modern versions of Windows. Error. Okay. Display the error text. <laughs> so is that just because we're running a core edition? SLUI. Oh, we don't even have the file. So yeah, it must be because this is considered a core edition of Windows. That's interesting. Let's look at the program files. We've got Internet Explorer, modifiable Windows apps, so we just got the usual things. Same for x86 program files, I imagine. Nothing too spicy. Sources, that's not on regular Windows. And then if we go in here, we can also see a bunch of other files, mostly normal, but not as many. I imagine because this is core version of Windows, so it doesn't need all of these different things. And also, by default, seems to use less CPU and probably less RAM as well. I don't know if that's only possible because this is a virtual machine and it's doing something like what Linux can do, where you can have what's called an LXC, which is not technically a virtual machine, it's just a container of the same kernel. I don't know if it's doing something like that or if it actually is just a really efficient version of Windows that could technically be installed on bare metal. I think this is going to be all for this video. Please let me know in the comments below if you want to see more of this. This is great because now I can easily test out uh, more complicated like game cheat malware. Bye.